New mom Shelly Robinson can't imagine life without her little girl Jacqueline. I mean, she's just I, the best thing that ever happened to me, so I want to make sure she's as safe as possible. Dr. Barbara Osfeld of the SID Center of New Jersey at Rutgers Robert Wood Johnson Medical School says she wants every baby in the state to be as safe as possible. And she never wants parents to suffer the agonizing heartbreak of losing a baby to sudden unexpected infant death. Sudden unexpected infant death is a category that we look at now that includes SIDS, sudden infant death syndrome. It's one of three diagnoses in an umbrella category, the other two being accidental suffocation and a third group called ill-defined and unknown causes. Although the causes of many of these deaths are often unknown, Dr. Osfeld says there is a way to reduce the risks, safe infant sleep. So the one people are most familiar with is back to sleep. And in fact, back to sleep, placing the baby to sleep on his or her back, has been named one of the leading pediatric discoveries of the last 40 years. It has dramatically reduced the rates of these deaths. So that's the one that is absolutely key and critical. Infants should sleep in a Consumer Product Safety Commission approved crib that is bare, says Dr. Osfeld. She removes the bumpers, stuffed animals and blankets in this crib for our cameras. No decorative pillows. I've never heard of a baby saying, I'd like a decorative pillow in my crib, please. Parents should avoid sleeping with infants in their bed, insists Dr. Osfeld, and smoking in the home, which increases the risk of SIDS. The CDC indicates in 2015 there were about 3,700 sudden unexpected infant deaths in the country. About 1,600 infants died of SIDS that year. It claimed the lives of 44 babies in New Jersey. SIDS is the leading cause of death among infants 1 to 12 months old. The SIDS Center of New Jersey has an extensive outreach program. They educate nurses at all birthing hospitals, New Jersey's pediatricians, providers of in-home visiting programs, child care providers, social service agencies, parents, and more. I'm a fairly new mom and remember my mom saying, I used to put you on your stomach to sleep every night and look, you were fine. A lot of other moms hear that today from their own moms. Absolutely. One should always check with one's pediatrician to see if there's a rare exception. But when a grandma says, I raised all of you like that and you're fine, we say, not fine, lucky, lucky. Because we were all raised, for example, without seat belts and cars. Most of us have made it through. You can do everything wrong in public health and still come out okay. You can eat bacon five times a day, smoke like a chimney, and maybe celebrate your 100th birthday, but you have a much better chance if you follow the, the health guidelines. So many rules have changed, uh, especially since I was a baby, so it's just important to make sure that you're doing what's best for your baby regardless of what other people say. Many parents wonder what to do when their babies start rolling over in their cribs. The American Academy of Pediatrics says that when a baby reaches the point where they can go belly to back and back to belly, both skills exist well, that you should initiate sleep on the back for the first year of life. But once those skills are there, the baby may assume another position and that would be okay. Baby Melody isn't rolling over just yet. She's only a few months old. Mom Sandra loves watching her infant sleep soundly. It's like falling in love all over again. These moms will sleep a little better tonight, knowing their babies are sleeping safely on their backs. In New Brunswick, I'm Lauren Wonko, NJTV News.